Welcome back. And we're getting ready to move into our conversation uh, in this segment that will be focused on uh, World GIS Day that is coming up and uh, the work that the University of Belize has been doing in regard to uh, this new technology. Mm -hmm. We have with us at this time Antonio Cano, who is a lecturer at the University of Belize. And we have a student in the Natural Resource Management uh, Studies, Hani Salazar. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It's, I must say, uh, it's nice to have you guys in the studio. Um, one of the things we've been hearing about for a while now is actually the GIS. So I'd like for you guys to uh, jump on that for the time being. But we know the big uh, Faculty of Science and Technology uh, GIS Day is coming up, so we want to branch off into that. But firstly, and we go to you, Mr. <laughs> Lecturer, <laughs> Mr. Antonio, GIS. What is GIS? Uh -huh. Well, first off, thank you very much for having us here this morning. Um, GIS. Uh, well, first off, it's an acronym mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that stands for Geographic Information Systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, more so than anything else, GIS is an analytical tool. Okay, so it lets us look at data, um, spatial data, mm -hmm. and look at relationships that might exist within that data. Okay, so we can go beyond just looking at or visualizing our data, but actually performing analysis on the data to derive information. And that information then guides us as managers or decision makers to then act upon. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really an emerging technology globally. Um, and here in Belize, we've seen it um, as well begin to pick up. Yeah. Um, different industries are now implementing or trying to find ways to implement GIS into the work that they're doing. Okay. Right. We actually had a conversation last week with a company uh, from Trinidad that was uh, talking about different technologies they wanted to bring to Belize. Mm -hmm. And we have heard before how the use of GIS can be used in many different sectors. Mm -hmm. Now I want to talk, obviously, uh, it's kind of a sales pitch to businesses that are already established <laughs> now. And once the connection can be made, I think people find how it can be useful. Mm -hmm. Now you have the young minds uh, in your classroom okay. and you get to teach them about the different methodologies and uh, practices, practical uses that can be implemented. So let's talk about how you integrate both within uh, your science and technology division, but obviously you have in other faculties as well, the use of GIS. Yeah, so currently we're looking to expand GIS at the University of Belize. Okay. Um, traditionally, well, since I've been there, um, GIS has been made available to students within our natural resource management program. Mm -hmm. um, so students like Hane mm -hmm. um, have been able to take this course. And, and it's really, I think, one of, I, I believe Galen also offers a course, but it's, those are the only courses that GIS offered mm -hmm. um, uh, in Belize, which we need to pick up on. Mm -hmm. Um, where what we're trying to do now is to expand that, to make it available to students from all backgrounds, because as you're saying, it has practical implications for students of all faculties. Um, for example, um, just, so, just to familiarize people with what the power of GIS can do, mm -hmm. um, if we're studying um, crime data, okay? Yeah. So we're looking at crime data. Um, you know, we have perhaps, you know, data pertaining to, to different precincts. Um, and we have data pertaining to different crime incidences. We can study those two data sets in relationship to one another and then get an understanding, okay, in this one precinct, you have a high number of crimes. Then it then becomes incumbent on whoever's in charge to make a decision based on, on that analysis mm -hmm. that, okay, maybe we need more patrols. You know, we need more um, boot, <laughs> boots on the ground yeah. um, to, to help support the staff, yeah. right? So. Really, your only limitation with GIS is your imagination um, because it deals with spatial data. Yeah. Anything that has some spatial location to it can be used in a GIS. It's like data and tracking linked together, right? Yeah, I think a simpler way of saying it is um, putting numbers into a picture. Yeah. So, okay. you know, people relate more to images that they can understand, you know, you know. And you can, and the cool thing about it is that the software enables you to make things pretty and attractive. So, you know, instead of presenting a table with numbers that people just won't understand, you present an image that they can relate to. Yeah. Okay, so it seems to be that uh, GIS is actually the in thing right now, and it seems that it will be carried on because it gives us a better way of uh, understanding uh, when it comes to data collecting and whatnot. How long has this been uh, instilled or implemented at the University of Belize Technology, Faculty of Science and Technology? 
Um, GIS has been uh, part of our curriculum for some years now. Okay. Um, currently, we're beginning to expand a little bit more upon what we're doing with GIS as far as taking on more research opportunities, uh, more projects and services that we're doing. Yeah. Um, one of the really exciting things that, that one of the reasons <laughs> that Hane is here um, is the launch of our open reef mapping project. Nice. Um, Your open what? The open reef, reef. mapping, yeah, mm. open reef mapping project through the, the Open Reef Mapping Society. Um, this is really exciting stuff yeah. because we're using this technology now to gather high resolution drone imagery from Belize's Keys. Mm -hmm. And this can have very, very big implications for things such as studying coastal erosion, mm -hmm. um, urban development, um, and, and climate change in, in general. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have to tell you, the minute you introduced it, Hani got excited. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> Go ahead. I know yeah. you want to tell us all about this. Yeah, so the open reef mapping project that we're currently undergoing here in Belize, it's pretty much flying a drone, the okay. manual, the, sorry, the um, Unmanned, yeah, unmanned aerial vehicles. So right now we're using DJI Phantom drones and we're flying over all the islands in Belize. Mm -hmm. So we started last week and we were working with the Coastal Zone Management, Port Authority. Um, and what we did was we drone mapped the area in front of Belize City. So we started from Drone Keys and our, we worked our way down to English Key. And it goes beyond just flying a drone over these islands. One of the big things that our society is on is called participatory GIS. So that means involving people, involving locals, involving researchers and scientists and just anybody that's interested. And one of the big things that we're, well, one of our main goals is that our data is completely free and open. Mm. So it's housed online and anybody has access to it. We are, we're currently working with the University of Central Florida. So they have their own connections that they're bringing into the table as well. We hope that more Belizean organizations will get involved. So we're also in the progress of talking to other organizations here in Belize. Yeah. Um, more is coming from the University of Belize itself. We have more people that are getting involved. So I think it's really exciting with this What stuff. type of data are you collecting with this mapping exercise? Good question. So we have, so far, we're mapping the islands to see, well, the core objective of it at this point is to look at climate change and land okay. use management. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at things like coastal erosion, uh, sea level rise. We're trying to see dredging, that kind of thing. One of the really amazing things about this is that we met a man last week, Mr. Foreman. Mm -hmm. He gave us a history of his island. Well, he's one of uh, the caretakers at the islands and uh, okay. it was very amazing to hear his story. He's lived, been living out there for many years now, lived through many hurricanes and storms. So it's interesting for him to tell us just how the island has changed and the dynamics and not just the island that he's at, but the entire area. Yeah. Because I mean, he's also a, a fisherman, so he, he visits these areas, he frequents them. So for someone that is there constantly, a local especially, to provide his version of science, his local knowledge, that's mm -hmm. very important to us. And that's something that I think sometimes we overlook mm -hmm. when we're making decisions. Mm -hmm. So local knowledge plays very, a very important role. One of the things that uh, our country and the whole get criticized on is the education system and uh, how long we take to implement things into mm -hmm. the education system. Hani got excited about the whole <laughs> GIS. You know, um, and she's doing her bachelor's, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about for the first year students? Are they able to, to, to expand on this the way you are? Because uh, it seems that, then again, GIS is actually now the in thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think you're, you're, you're right on. You're, you're spot on on that. Uh, we need to find a way to introduce this at a much younger age. Um, mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we're looking at how we can integrate GIS more into the university. Uh, one of the things that we have been exploring through our own program development is bringing this course down into the associate's level mm -hmm. um, so students in their first and second years at the university can take this course. But I think we need to even go further beyond that, uh, maybe introducing GIS into the high school curriculum or at the primary school level. And Hani can talk to you um, about her experiences. She mm -hmm. worked on a project in Hopkins this summer uh, working with, with, locals, with, with locals but the kids would come out and they're really mm -hmm. excited about the technology. And the great thing about, you know, uh, about kids, you know, they, they, they pick up on technology really quick. Mm -hmm. um, they might be the most ideal people to, to, to teach technology to because they're so adaptable to it. Yeah. You, hit the, you hit the nail on the head, honey. 
you did mention that we're collecting data like off the coast of Belize City. Uh, what are we finding so far in terms of data? And I'm asking this from the standpoint so that for those who are, especially the younger ones, the first year students, uh, uh, so they could they, they know that, you know what, this is an exciting thing that's now being implemented in UB. What is what are we finding so far right now? What is the data that's that we're finding? So we're currently still processing images. Yeah. Uh, that's the most time consuming part. Um, there's not a lot of us with that expertise to process the images. I myself, I'm very new in the practice. So we have students from UCF that are helping us with that because they are, are a collaborator on the project. And um, how what we're seeing so far, Hmm, this might be jumping the gun a bit, but personally, because I've been working in the marine field for a few years now, I think there is not enough regulations in terms of land use management, or at least not enf enough enforcement. Like things have been, and this is based on what we've been hearing from people that we meet out on these islands, that structures just pop up out of nowhere. People just clear land, and then they just dredge around it, they fill it and the uh, structure will just pop up, whether it's for a local entity or for a foreign entity. You know, they don't always say. Yeah. But I think that's one of our big issues, and we actually spoke to someone from uh, Land in Land's Information Center, where one of the things they recommended to us would be looking at uh, collecting inventories of these islands. So trying to look at what structures are on these islands over water structures. I mean, all of this is still in talk, but it's exciting things that, you know, we can collaborate more with these entities, with these departments. Yeah. Now, the data that you collect itself, I'd imagine uh, using images, you can be able to, to process several things just by looking at them. Mm -hmm. You can look at the uh, mangrove density, you can mm -hmm. look at the number of structures, you can look at shapes and sizes of the islands. Mm -hmm. Um, but what about processing other data uh, that you spoke about? You spoke about uh, sea level rise um, and several other stuff you'd mentioned before. There's obviously a, a science to be able to interpret that kind of data. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the more complicated factors that you're trying to uh, achieve through your mapping exercise. Uh, this is where especially the local knowledge comes into play. Yeah. Um, we've actually mapped some islands that are now underwater and this is based on the people that we've met before the project started and while uh, we started the project that have told us oh you need to go to this place an island used to be here it's not there anymore and then we have people with the expertise that can tell you um, just looking at the image they can tell you well based on the habitat around the island they can say well this part used to be above water yeah. and then based on that we can try to determine uh, sea level depth for mm -hmm. instance so the technology exists for that kind of thing. Now you can look at sea surface temperature, at water depth, at shallow water habitats, you know, that kind of thing. We can also look at uh, megafauna, which are your turtles, your uh, manatees, especially dolphins. Mm -hmm. So we're also picking up these animals in the images. Now so you've spoken about having had some experience in the marine field before, mm -hmm. and obviously now being introduced to this technology, what difference does it make for you in the work that you used to do and what you thought was possible before mm -hmm. and now with the knowledge and execution of the GIS? Definitely easier and yeah. more fun. <laughs> Apart from diving. You mean even like me. island hopping and trying to get the data? <laughs> you know, all the tanning and whatnot, yeah. Uh, no, well, it being in the field, being doing the validation work is, that's my favorite part of the work personally. I'm still as much time as I spent in the marine field, I'm still new in this field. So for me, using this technology, it's connecting people from dis different disciplines, bringing them together. Yeah. And another issue we have in Belize is the lack of communication. Mm -hmm. So a project like this, we're not just using marine biologists and GIS expertise, we're also looking at uh, with people that have any knowledge with uh, um, sociology, people that can communicate well. Um, we have people, we actually have an archaeologist on our team, um, so we can look at structures like that. Uh, eventually when we get to that point, we have other people with urban development on our team. So, and as we bring on more collaborators, we'll, we'll keep on growing, keep on expanding. Excellent.
You know, Antonio, this is a great example. And I, and I think to show a student who is enthusiastic about utilizing the technology is one way to be able to show people that it can uh, be used in many other aspects other than just what people would expect in science and technology. Um, the faculty oftentimes is, is a bit of uh, having to work with uh, the professors, the instructor, instructors, the lecturers who haven't been exposed to this type of technology. What does the university do on that level to be able to ensure that even uh, a lecturer can be able to think, okay, I'll call up uh, the technology division and see how I can get something from them to be able to help us with a project we're doing, whether it's nursing or education or something along those lines? Well, I think uh, apart from building up capacity in our student body. We also have to build capacity within the faculty as well. Um, we have in the past had trainings and workshops for our faculty. Um, it's something that we hope to expand upon um, going forward to offer more workshops um, for the faculty who are interested in learning about GIS. Um, I have actually been working this semester with um, faculty, um, other faculty members to try to build them up, build up their capacity kind of more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah. Um, from a more holistic standpoint, um, we're kind of moving into this 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 next week where where it's going to be kind of a GIS week yeah. uh, because we have um, in the early portion of the week we're actually bringing in, or we're going to be participating in a workshop um, hosted by TBSL um, on GIS and education. Mm -hmm. um, they're bringing in an expert from the U.S. to come in and talk to to not only us in UB, but I think um, other educational institutions mm -hmm. as to how you can introduce or better introduce GIS into the curriculum. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then going forward, we also have the GIS Day Symposium. I believe there's also a GIS Day Expo here okay. in Belize City coming up as well. Um, so we're, we're pushing GIS. We're also integrating service projects. Um, at the university, we have three mandates. Um, we have education, we have service, and we have research. Mm -hmm. So. For instance, I might be working with um, various faculty who are interested in doing research. Um, they might have the special, um, the speciality in their particular interest, but they might need the, the supplemental support in GIS, and that's where I lend a helping hand to them. You know, I, I, could, actually, I could actually see, like, Hani is actually living a dream. They always say that your college days are one of the best, that, that you know, yeah. these years are some of your best years, yeah. and I'm sure that the GIS will be catching on. We're actually chit-chatting here about GIS Day. Now, tell us what can we expect on GIS Day, and who is going to be at, uh, if, there, if there'll be um, activities, okay. yes, symposium. So who will be there? Tell us about the day. Okay, so our GIS day is going to be on November the 18th, mm -hmm. um, which is next Friday from 9 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, we are really very, very thankful to our sponsors, BEL, BNE, and Jiz Silva Maya program, mm -hmm. um, because without them, you know, we, we wouldn't have been able to put this together. Um, GIS day really came about as an idea um, sparked really around the world um, to showcase work that's being done in GIS. And when I came back from my studies and came back to Belize about three years ago, I wanted to bring that same concept back here. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to showcase our student work. Um, we started out Hani's class a couple years ago. Um, we, we showed some, some of the work that they were doing. Last year we had our first symposium, um, student symposium. And then this year we wanted to build upon that even more. So we have different student projects being presented. Mm -hmm. um, we've also invited some stakeholders to come in and present as well, okay. um, so that not only our students are presenting their work, but they're also getting exposed to the work that various industries are doing in GIS. Um, because I think that also helps to spark their interest to see, okay, you know, it's beyond just the classroom, yeah, it's but you know, they can mm -hmm. see that, yes, you know, all these industries really are moving into applying GIS. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, um, I get a few who think you know, let me go and uh, <laughs> study some more GIS. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the symposium, you have any special speakers coming in? Um, so, like I said, we have, um, we have various stakeholders who will be participating. Um, so TBSL, um, which is the ESRI ArcGIS distributor. ArcGIS is the, probably like the Microsoft mm -hmm. of GIS softwares. They'll be presenting, um, BNE will be presenting, um, as well as SIB and FCD and our okay. student presenters. Mm -hmm. So it's going to make for a really, really nice day. Um, and like I said, next week is, 
it's going to be kind of like a GIS week uh, yeah. because uh, we also where UB will also be participating in the in a GIS Day Expo, mm -hmm. uh, which is in Belize City on Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. So you guys can also stop by for the booth um, at at the expo, which is at the Ramada, and then at our symposium. Um, we hope that you guys can also make it out. Um, it's free. Um, there's no charge. Anyone can drop <laughs> Any, by. Uh, anyone can come if you have an interest. Um, and if they know nothing about GIS, they'll still be uh, engaged. That's the uh, perfect place to start. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I think Hani summed it up real good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Hani, tell me, uh, having the exposure uh, through the project, through the course, uh, what is, if you have seen perhaps one possibility where GIS can be used, uh, not necessarily being implemented at this point, but what, what has it opened up your mind to in terms of possibilities? Um, underwater mapping. Ah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a diver. I uh, spend a lot of time underwater. So one of the things that I'd like to see ventured in here in Belize is actually having a sound habitat map of Belize of our reef. So actually doing an underwater map of our reef, looking at the resources that are available, what we need to protect better. We have in Belize, we have numerous spawning sites mm -hmm. for our commercial fish species. I'd like to see, meanwhile, we know where they are and they've been mapped in the past. Personally, I would like to see those updated. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's our livelihood in Belize, okay. our, our fisheries industry. Um, what's growing also is the sea cucumber industry. I'd like to see more of, more of this technology being invested in that, you know, things like that. And these are things that are growing and they're growing rapidly right now in Belize. So if we can apply this technology to that science and that management, then I think that would be excellent. All right. Great. Well, fantastic. Of course, as you mentioned, the symposium is next Friday yes. in Belize City. No, no, this no that one is, is at Belmopan. in Belmopan yeah, yeah, at the, the George, George Price, Price Center for Peace and Development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Free to anyone who wants to yeah. attend. And uh, you have your expo coming up. There's an expo coming yeah. up as well. Um, and the other event you mentioned was on... Oh, um, I, I believe on Tuesday, where Tuesday. That, that's for the educators who okay. will be um, learning more about GIS and implementing GIS in the curriculum. Um, so we're, we're, we're really getting into it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, fantastic. We want to thank you for stopping in and mm -hmm. telling us all about it. Uh, of course, we hope that people will be able to stop into the symposium next Friday uh, and learn about how this technology can be used. And see yeah. awesome pictures. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the, newest, the newest in thing yeah. to hit the scene. But like you guys mentioned, it's, some, it's actually making things better for a uh, bunch of the big companies mm -hmm. who are actually collecting data, uh, finding out this and that. So we're looking forward to GIS Day uh, for next week, Friday. The November 18th, actually, close it. Relate right. to it. I could relate to it. <laughs> November, uh, November 18th. But then again, again, thank you guys so very much for being a part of us. But uh, when we come back, though, you might want to stay right there. We'll be telling you about a big sales promotion coming up from Belize Telemedia Limited. So stay with us. We'll take the break and we'll be right back.